Hello, welcome back to my channel and let's give this a try. How's my hair? Okay, all good. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, don't want to turn into a talking head on YouTube, but there is one little thing that's sort of close to my uh, mind here and that's the Wingstrut upgrade for the Challenger 2 or Challenger aircraft. Some of you might know there has been an accident with a wing separation that is known with a failed bracket, a strut bracket that happened in Ontario. Uh, you can look it up on the internet. It's with, uh, it's a Transport Canada advisory. Link is down below if you want to have a look at what happened. And then also the upgrade kit from Ufly out of uh, Florida. We just received one of those. They are, yeah, they're good. They're, they're, they're heavy. They're super heavy. They, they're way better than what is on there to begin with. I, I don't want to argue this, but I do question if they dealt with the symptoms or if they actually dealt with the disease, which is brackets failing and the wing coming off. And if, if there would have been a better way to secure the bracket on the bottom with a strap around the longeron versus just upgrading the, uh, the U bracket. The other thing also, when you get the U-Fly kit, the bolts that are included, none of them worked. Not a one. I'm not quite sure what they put in there. There's supposed to be an AN4-23A that goes through this here. For the rear attachments uh, to bolt it to the aircraft, they're calling for an AN4-27A, which actually should be an AN4-30A. And then in the rear bracket, where the actually the bolt goes through the gear leg, the steel welded gear leg part, we came up with an AN4-32A bolt to secure that. And what that is supposed to look like is, is the one here, if you can see this, that's the, the basic bottom one, large washer, small washer, okay. And then here is the one with the uh, going through the steel gear leg. And those bolts, sorry, this is backwards because I'm on selfie here, but uh, you get the idea. Of course, where the steel gear leg is, you about another eighth. Well, not quite an eighth, but something like that, thicker than where you are. Uh, I'm gonna give you a, the installation itself is straightforward. Okay, secure the wing. Take one strut out, clean it up. What is also not working is that you have to attach some bushings, which you can get from AirTech out of uh, Louisiana, I think they're at. There's also a link down below to actually push the uh, difference between the strut thickness and the strut bracket. They're sort of a half moon shaped thing, you know, I'll show you momentarily what that looks like. Overall, really good, but uh, I, I'm still questioning the uh, fact of using this kind of system versus to just put a, a bloody strap all the way around the tube and then bolt it to the bracket. New ones, that is, or the same ones, the upgraded ones, whatever. That way you're absolutely assured that this thing will never come loose, you know. Anyways, those are just my thoughts as a former Builder and pilot of a challenge and all I can say to those aircraft, you know, the two happiest moments in my life when I got the kit and when I sold the bloody thing. So anyways, if you're in the market for a challenger out there, uh, they're fun. Okay, they're great. They're a good little aircraft. Would I get one? No. Um, they're hard to get in, hard to get out. They don't lend themselves nicely for training. Uh, money versus what is out there on the market is another thing they, they, in my opinion for what you get you can you can do better you know you're not gonna get a kid fox 7 but you can definitely uh entertain a kolb or something that is especially if you're in the in the six foot plus size of person and and you're not as nimble anymore as you used to be the challenger is not necessarily the greatest aircraft for anyone having said that they have their place there's many of them out there. A lot of them is uh, to be had very reasonably, very cheaply. Not, I shouldn't say cheaply, very reasonably priced. However, um, before you commit to purchasing, make sure you understand what you're getting, what some of the issues are around that aircraft. 
uh, make sure they have the upgrade kit in it. There is a whole bunch of, uh, a slew of upgrades that you can do those aircraft. My personal favorite, I like the stock standard 503 Challenger 2 long wing, white body, whatever you want to call it. I had one, they're okay, they're great, you know. Especially if you're just by yourself with a tent and just going to explore. Uh, with the heavy engine, more fuel, uh, you have to do some upgrades. You have to get at least the uh, the English Dale or British Dale or whatever. There's another uh, service bullet now from the Brits that is also, if I can find it, I will include it down below. So anyways, uh, as they have fallen a little bit sort of into out of favor with a lot of pilots, you know, I do think that the basic um, aircraft is okay, you know, and given, if you don't mind to do a few little things to them, they do make a nice option in the ultralight field. Anyways, uh, follow up with a couple of close-ups here and give me a minute and we'll take a look at those. This is the old bracket that we pulled off. And I'm not sure if you can see this here, but there's definitely some lines forming along the uh, bolt, which may be pressure lines just from, from bolting it down and then wearing on the fabric, but something was going on, obviously. Uh, on the inside, I can't tell not really anything, which is a good thing. I mean, we wouldn't want to have those things come off. There's maybe a little bit of wear in here, as you can see. Nothing on that side or just very little. So those are the old ones that came off. In comparison to the new ones, well, yeah, the, the one thing you don't have to worry that the uh, washout is going to change on the wing. They already uh, let, left room for this. And uh, very, like in weight alone, very, very heavy. So bracket goes on, the shim goes on top, bolt kind of goes through, goes in through the uh, launcher on, the rear half moon goes on, followed by a large washer in the uh, EN4 nut. If you are changing from this bracket to this bracket, you see there's a difference in size. And the one thing that's not included in the kit is those little bushings. So in order to, to kind of get a nice fit, you have to order those bushings and try to kind of hold. Let's just drop this down here. Hold this so you can see it. So basically the spar the, pardon me, not the spar, but the strut goes in between and gets secured just the same as it is on the wing on top. Let me take you for a quick walk, what I meant earlier here by putting a strap around uh, the whole thing and securing it to the launch runs, so there's really no chance of a failure. So there is a set of uh, beaver wings hanging on the wall here. They came off an RX-550. And when you look at the... Uh, Bracket here, it goes right around the spar. If that would have been on the longerons of the Challenger, with this bracket, oh, it's a little bit stiff here. Let me fiddle with this. With this bracket going in between and holding it like this, so it's doubled up, you get the idea. There is just no way that this thing would ever come off, in my opinion. While I'm not an aeronautical engineer or whatever, but just from looking at this system where the strap goes around it all the way forward, it literally doubles up the strength and uh, it's just one more option. I don't think that uh, a bracket failure would actually allow the wing to come off unless the whole thing kind of goes out and that's sort of unlikely. But just a thought that came across and I always kind of wondered if there wouldn't be a better way of doing this. To finish off here, there is a couple of uh, other issues that have really never been discussed in the Challenger field and, and it caught me a little bit sideways also because uh, Carolyn tried to uh, do her training with it, but uh, pretty quick we realized that we found out, this was after we purchased the kit, that when you hop in the front seat, if the nose wheel does not go onto the ground, you are out of C of G. So basically that means you're going to have to go and put your toolkit in the front. And that's basically with, with the person 150 pounds 
175 pounds, you're probably going to have an issue with, especially so with the R582 and the big fuel tank and blah, 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 and all the stuff that you might want to add to it, it becomes a uh, an issue. Personally, I have encountered a few more issues, and, and this is just strictly my experience and my opinions. I'm not saying that this is on all of them. Maybe it's just a particular one that we have flown here. We kept breaking the uh, rudder trim tab, and that's on a 582 Challenger with the upgraded tail with the uh, big fuel tank. And on climb out full power, if you let go of the rudder, she would veer about 15 degrees to the left and completely climb out, not straight, but in a yaw of, of 15 degrees. And anyways, there's enough force to do that. The next thing we found out is when you have two equally big boys in there, like myself and Jess, me in the back, him in the front doing training. And um, there is a tendency that when you do stalls, that there's no, not really a clean break. So given the yaw, that is also part of adding the power again. I, I was always a little bit leery of this thing. If we blow it, if we're going to end up in a flat spin with that aircraft, if we decide to, to mess around a little bit more and, and, and do things quite wrong or you do a correction, can you actually pull out? I have had a complete loss of control in the Challenger in some uh, gusty condition where it pretty much rolled me almost right through complete soft stick. There was nothing anywhere. Power changes, stick back forth, no elevator, uh, cycled the engine and then finally we were sort of heading upside down almost for the trees. She decided to come out underneath and with a couple of pine needles in the wheels we actually kind of got away with it. So there is there is definitely some some issues and that was again with the smaller tail and smaller elevator and and uh, a little bit less tail surfaces, you know, that kind of really it got my attention, to just say the least, you know. Uh, having said all this, again, those are my opinions, those are my experiences. Uh, yours might be different, you might be more versed in the challenger. I rolled in, I don't know, 60, 80 hours maybe. I'm not that high of a challenger pilot, you know, before I decided to get rid of it and pick up something a little bit more solid like a Cessna 172 in that case. Just wanted to put this out there, something to think about, something to consider, lots of used ones and uh, by a be aware and that's about all I have to say. Thanks for joining me, see you out there, fly safe and uh, let's look forward to the next video. Bye for now.